in the 2006 election. So only 140 people out of about three or 4,000 registered mm -hmm. voters That's right. in my precinct. And so the first people I'm going to talk to, and Don, I'm going to take the approach you discussed a little while ago, is I, I am going to go talk to these Republicans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in my district mm -hmm. directly, but I'm going to take more of an agnostic approach at first. I'm right. not going to wear right. my regalia right. because I'm going to try to feel them out. Because one, right. thing, one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to ignite passion in our opposition. And so we don't want to get in an argument with the uh, diehard, neocon Republicans, we want to find out, we can find out pretty simply if they're for Ron Paul or not, and then we've got a teammate in our precinct, and that's the ones you want to find, is you're looking to find teammates that are already pretty much on board, the people that, you know, are kind of shying away or whatever, we don't want to light up any passion in those folks because we don't want them attending the precinct convention, and guess what, Don, uh, and one thing we learned, Steve Mason and I went to a, a ballot mm -hmm. selection last Thursday, mm -hmm. and now they're saying that the election uh, workers are going to be to announcing to all the voters that, oh, by the way, there's a precinct convention after the poll closes. So that's something new, right? They never have done that before, uh, right? Well, they're supposed to do it. They're oh, really? supposed to be doing it, and there's supposed to be a prominent posting announcing the precinct convention, the time that it will convene, and exactly where it is. That's actually required by the Texas Elections Code. Well, that's interesting. doesn't mean they always do it, but it's required by the Texas Election Code that they post prominently where the precinct convention will be held and what time it starts. Well, it's amazing, though, because uh, although in my life I haven't voted in too many primaries, and most of the time when I have voted in primaries, I've done the early vote, mm -hmm. and so those polls probably don't have all the information. But I will mm -hmm. tell you this is I didn't know about a precinct convention till 2006. I had never even heard of a precinct convention till 2006, um, and that was when Steve Mason and I were out there working in District 52 in Southern Williamson County, and that's when we first heard the Steve, well, Steve already knew about it, but I didn't. And uh, so anyway, now these precinct conventions are gonna be real key in selecting the delegates. So, you, but you know what, Richard? There are a whole bunch of people that know about it now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we people that had no idea what was going on. Yeah, we got to keep letting them know. But see, yeah. the thing of it is, our advantage, though, is the passion factor. Definitely. And that's, uh, like I say, recognizing strengths and weaknesses. Our One of our greatest strengths is there's no group of people more passionate. The the next ones that might be close are probably Obama Obama folks. people, absolutely. Obama folks, that's, they're, they, second, they're in second place. Right. They've got the fires lit, and Obama truly does have uh, the Democrat machine to mm -hmm. some level hang, you know, going behind him. Which, and, a, and a lot of young voters. They've been, yes. uh, the talking heads have been pointing that out a lot, that, that Hillary's vote is the older establishment crowd and Obama's coming in with the younger generation. Absolutely. I mean, what, what we can't figure out is he just goes up there with a, with a cheesy smile and his charm and charisma. And supposed, change. Supposed charisma. Change. Change. You know, change to what? And change I'll tell you the, what, you know, and, and you know. It's frustrating the, to us because he says, he says nothing. You know? I, well, I know. I know. It's amazing. It's amazing. But, yeah. but see. It's the press that says, that says he's got all this charisma. They say that he has the charisma. I've seen him in person. You don't see the charisma. I, huh? I don't see the charisma, folks, yeah. because I don't hear any real message. I just mm. see an empty suit message coming out of Barack Obama. He, he can give a good speech, and the crowd out there, I don't know if they're on Prozac or uh, I don't know if they're on some psychotropic or on ecstasy or whatever, but they just seem to lap it up, and I'm like, well, you know, I, I'm waiting to really hear some meat and potatoes in this speech and it, that never happened. But I will tell you this, and, and Don just kind of skirted on the issue, and we brought it up last week, is the mainstream media, not only is there an obvious Ron Paul blackout in coverage, but there's also a, a, a diminished level of reporting on the Republican race just in general. Uh, just last week, I was streaming WMUR television out of New Hampshire, an ABC or CBS affiliate, I don't remember which uh, flavor of lamestream media it was, but folks, at, seven, at around 7.10 or 7.15 Central Time here in Texas, they announced McCain as the New Hampshire winner, and then they proceeded to spend the next two and a half some odd hours focusing on the Democrat race, Obama versus Clinton, Obama versus Clinton. So they're selling the Democrats. So that's just mm -hmm. another thing that's out there that we've got to deal with, and we really can't worry about it, though, because our strengths are is we've got to get our boots on the ground and get them, get them talking. All right, now going back to the issue of going to a precinct convention, and I've been to a couple of uh, mm -hmm. the training sessions that we've had here in mm -hmm. Austin, which mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed. But tell some of the folks 
how that they're, they're liable to run into this resistance from the establishment hacks in these precinct well, conventions. Well, keep in mind that these precinct conventions have been going on, you know, for decades. Right. And some of the people running the precinct conventions, the incumbent precinct chairs who always start the meeting, they, they could have been in office for literally for decades. So uh, they've, uh, they've got lifelong relationships with voters in their precincts. And they've been doing this, you know, just no one can remember how long they've been doing it. So when a new person comes in or a Ron Paul person especially comes in, there's, there's automatically some suspicion and some fear, you know, and, and, and a little paranoia. Rightfully so. And rightfully so. <laughs> and, uh, Ron Paul revolution. But Who are these revolutionaries? Tell, tell us, uh, I know you told me about your first experience at a precinct convention where they, uh, they Very kind of put interesting. it on you. Go ahead, I, go yeah, lay, go well, ahead and lay was, that out for the audience. Well, it was in, it was in Houston. Uh, first time I finally showed up for a precinct convention, it was in uh, southwest Houston. And the woman there had been a long time, you know, precinct chair. She's a long time incumbent. And, uh, she, and she's really pretty typical of the incumbent precinct chairs. You know, they're, they're not that passionate about their ideology. They're really passionate about their position, you know, as a precinct chair and, and their access to elected officials and, and the, the little smidgen of prestige. So they're trying that goes to keep along, that power. Keep that little bit of power. Right. It's almost no power, but still power, you know, what power does to people. Power in their mind. Their own so mind. When, they, when they see new people walk in, their first reaction is to be very, very, very defensive and, and to just shut them out, you know. And the arguments they use, the arguments they used against all these new people that came into this. Um, precinct meeting is, well, you know, the, the delegate process and the delegates that represent the neighborhood should be those people that have traditionally been working for Republican candidates, you know, yada, yada, yada. And they give, they give you an argument that, well, if you're a new person, you're really not entitled to go because you need to be out there working hard and working for candidates, you know. And, and you, you can kind of see, kind of see that argument. But, but here's the problem with that argument. Uh, most of the people that this woman had put up with a slate of candidates, they haven't showed up for anything in 10 years. They weren't there at the meeting And in that your case, night. they weren't even there at they the precinct. They, they didn't even show up. They didn't even show up. And they're not going to show up at the next uh, senatorial district meeting either. But the incumbent precinct chair doesn't care because she'll get to vote for the entire delegate strength even if nobody shows up but her. Right. So she gets all the power, all the voting power of that precinct. If her friends don't show up, mm -hmm. she gets to vote for everybody. So let's keep all these new people at home and don't let them participate because she doesn't know who they are. They might vote against her. Right. You know, her power might di be diminished. So that's their motivations for doing it. And, th and they have a sense of entitlement that they should be allowed to do this kind of trickery and chicanery and to shut people out because they've been there and they've been in the trenches. They're the old guard, you know, right. and they've been working for the candidates for years. So that's where they're coming from on that. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, and see, those type of dirty tricks are out there, folks. So whenever you learn about the precinct conventions, wherever, whatever state you're in, get with your meetup groups. Search on Google ronpaulmeetup.com, ronpaulmeetup.com. Just type that in and find the nearest group in your area, wherever you're located, and you're going to find Don Zimmerman's out there, hopefully, in your meetup groups that know this system, that can explain to you how it works. It's very important that you, that you go into these functions and have a pretty good idea of how they work so that you don't get blackballed out. In Don's case, what year was it that? 1994. That was first 1994. Year that so I showed up, and not just me, but all the new people were basically shut out in 1994. All the new I, people. So you I didn't come know back anything about the rules. I didn't know Robert's Rules of Order. We got tricked up on, tripped up on that. I just didn't know anything. Well, that was 94. Right. Now, in 96, that same precinct chair actually phoned me and invited me to become a delegate. Hmm. Because they, they were afraid that we were going to form a coup and, and throw her out, Lord. which we were going to do. Yeah. So she took the lead and said, you know what, <laughs> I, I can't beat them this time. I'm going to join them and, and bring right. them all in. So okay. we got a bunch of new people in. And actually, you know, it worked out pretty good. We, we didn't have that much difference in ideology. And, you know, everybody was, was pretty happy in the end. You know, all the people that wanted to go went. And we all showed up in force and worked out well. But we want to prepare people because... The Ron Paul Revolution, Ron is 72 years old, and uh, we're not sure if we're going to have this opportunity again. I, I think it's a, it's a unique opportunity in history, so it's very important that our people get in this go-around. We don't have time to wait two years because we probably won't have Ron. 
uh, four years from now. We may not have him again. I don't think he'd be prepared uh, to run again. Yeah.